All right, two things before we jump into this episode. I recorded this before I drove to work. I'll probably be posting this uh, probably late tonight because I won't be able to even throw this together and edit it till tonight. But I mentioned someone who was helping me, who was a photographer that's local, and I didn't say his name. For some reason, I was like, I should ask him first, but no, I'm just going to say his name and what his company is. His name is Ron Aguilar, and his company is Utah Valley Videos, and I'm uh, 99% sure the website is utahvalleyvideos.com and I it sounded like in I in the inter, in the episode as you listen to it it sounds like I'm talking about the same person called me again but I'm talking about two different people who reached out to me to help me unsolicitedly so the first is Ron Aguilar and the second was Jason Baller who has a podcast called Sprinkle with Hope I was listening to it on the way in today to work it's like a 30 minute drive or 25 give or take and it's amazing. Um, his most recent episode is with someone who is, I think it's Melissa Pay. Ooh, I really, it's hard when I'm recording on my phone because I can't, I think if I pull up, pull it up, it'll stop the recording. But yeah, listen to this podcast. It's amazing. It's so legit. I'm like, oh man, I need better audio. I need better intros. I need to do better. But also, I'm just going to be me. I realize, like, I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> Anyways, enjoy the episode. All right. Welcome to No Better Time. I'm Phil Salter, and I've just been thinking a lot. I want to talk about this concept, a concept of abundance and scarcity. This is not a new thing. It's something I've come across. It's, you know, was new to me at one point, but it's something that, it's interesting. Once you kind of get uh, aware of a certain concept, you start to see it around you and you start to notice it being referenced. It's just like when you buy a certain car, you start to see that same car on the road a lot. It doesn't mean there's more of that concept or thing in the world. You just now become aware of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's why it's really cool to learn new things because then you'll be able to notice it in the world and... Um, learn more and to solidify those concepts it can also be a bad thing I guess if you think about it confirmation bias is a really real thing where once you've come to a conclusion you just look for more proof to validate what you believe or think um, so you need to be careful of that but I was listening to I can't, this was driving me nuts I was listening to a podcast and I could have sworn it was um, armchair expert this is a, a podcast I love and he was talking to someone and somehow the concept of abundance came up and there's so much to go around and they were talking about like someone doesn't have to fail in order for you to win we can all win together there's so much out there and it, this has come up in my life so much this last week I had an update last week about um, my passive income and how I realized with my photography business I can outsource my editing and how I had reached out to a specific real estate photography group that I'm in Facebook and I just said hey I'm thinking this is what I need I need photos and I need them delivered within a certain time frame I don't know if that's even a realistic expectation is that possible and people started speaking up and then someone who lives in my neighborhood who does real estate photography and video and other types of photography but he's like this really successful this is his like full-time gig he's like the cream of the crop when it comes to this kind of photography and he speaks up in this Facebook post and says, Hey, actually, I have a couple people that I've used, but like, if you start to do this and you uh, figure this out, it's going to change. Like, your business is going to, like, you'll never go back, you know? And I was like, That's amazing. I was like, If you don't mind, if you don't mind, like, messaging me, like, some of the people you've used for this service. And he's like, Hey, I'll give you a call. And I was like, Oh, yeah, sure. He'll call me. But guess what? Two days later, I get a phone call from him. Um, this is after the previous update randomly like in the afternoon and he, I'm like whoa he's calling me and of course I get this like anxiety around like phone calls and sometimes I just don't want to answer but I was like no this he's calling me I'm going to answer this call and he is just like hey man he just jumps right into it he's just like hey uh, like the editing services and he started giving me advice and feedback and what to look for and what kind of pricing is reasonable and and uh in basically the guy I, the per, the the source i had found was the one he's actually used and he's like yeah they're good and uh it was amazing he started giving me we started talking about the photography and he sh i talked about like my process how i do the photos and how i do my lighting and he sh he talked to me about ways that he had learned 
how to do it faster and get the same like great results. And I'm like, whoa, it blew my mind the things he told me that I could immediately start implementing to save time while I'm shooting. So now I'm saving time while I'm shooting and I'm saving time by not editing photos myself. And we talked about how do I make sure I get the right amount of photos because every photo I take, if I outsource it to be edited, it costs money. So it's like, how do I make sure I'm really getting the what I need without like spending more money than I need to? He's giving me all this great advice. And I'm like, I realized in this moment, like, dude, this guy's my competition or I'm, I'm at least his competition, right? Um, and he's helping me. And I said to him, like, it sounds like you're not really afraid of me. I was like, technically, someone could consider me your competition. And he's like, dude, there's so much to go around. And it, like, blew my mind that he was so generous that he's giving me the things that he spent blood, sweat, and tears to learn. And he's, like, handing this information off to me. And I was so grateful. And it was amazing. And he's right. There's so much to go around um, that... It's not like me succeeding means he needs to fail. There's very few situations where it's like, hey man, gotta be cutthroat, right? Like, I'm not saying there's not a place for that necessarily. I'm not a cutthroat kind of person, but I'm not saying that like, you always have to help your competition. But I'm just saying this idea that there's abundance in the world and holding back information is a scarcity mindset. In the same photography group I'm in, People were asking questions about photography. And this guy speaks up and says, I'm so sick of people coming here and wanting to get, get quick answers. I spent four years in school. I apprenticed with photographers. I spent all this time learning this stuff and you just want to come here and get answers? And I'm like, of course. These people aren't looking for quick answers. They're looking for answers. That's two different things. They're not looking for like a quick get rich scheme. They're saying, I want to learn about photography. This is a photography Facebook group. What, what This, this, and that. And they're asking questions. And this guy's annoyed that this person is just kind of getting to the chase and then can do as well as him or bordering, you know, in his region, compete with him and be able to potentially take his, be competition to him, even though this is a Facebook group from all over the country and world, you know what I mean? But, and I just thought, what a, backwards mentality it's like maybe you wasted your time and money spending that much time learning this well not necessarily but maybe you did or maybe at least he feels like he might have like if i spend all this time and money and this person can just come here and learn this and like in a couple months be doing what i'm doing like that's the wrong attitude like if he didn't he needs to look and say what did i gain from this i have this core understanding i gained relationships you know but the scarcity mindset was right there and i was just like wow I wanted to say something, but I stopped myself because it's like, what good is that, right? And then this guy um, in my neighborhood again just yesterday reaches out to me. He has a podcast. His name is Jason Baller, and it's a podcast called Sprinkled with Hope. And he's like, hey, man, I listened to some of your podcast. Um, I have some potential guests that you could have on your podcast and I was like that's amazing I'm gonna listen I I'm gonna listen to, I want to listen to your podcast I told him and I want you to be on my podcast and he's like great it just his like generosity of like there's abundance it's out there because I mean there's a lot of podcasts in the world and you could say one more podcast someone's listening to is competition for me you know what I mean he, obviously he's not gonna see it that way and he's here to help other people and just people being willing to be guests on my podcast they're giving their time it's just amazing. And I just think that this is a concept we need to learn and recognize there's abundance in the world. And that if we have a scarcity mindset and we hold back helping others or have that attitude in general, we're going to be more guarded. We're going to be closed. Open yourself to opportunity. Put yourself out there and don't be afraid of the time and the energy and the resources that you need to be sharing with other people. And things will come to you. Doing this podcast obviously is only has so many people listening to every episode. But I have gained so much from putting myself out there and trying to, I mean, ultimately, I'm trying to put something out there that someone could benefit from. But obviously, I'm benefiting the most. It's making me think differently. I've done, I've implemented changes that have already benefiting me with my time and my money. And I've started making new contacts and friends and it's changing my life in the short time I've been doing this. So go out about the world, 
with that attitude and it's going to change your life man and it's going to change your life quickly and I'm going to continue to do this I'm going to continue to keep you updated I have had so many interviews and I have more scheduled I have I'm I have like weeks and weeks and weeks with the interviews so I'm, gonna, I'm releasing one interview per week and I've been doing one like of these like quick dives but I'm curious to know if anyone does give me feedback you can you can email me at nobettertime.podcast at gmail.com if is it better that I do two episodes a week like this one shorter one interview I try to keep them all around 30 minutes or less sometimes it goes a little over um is it better that I would incorporate these all into one episode let's say I do like an intro like a kind of an update and my thoughts and then I lead into the interview and make that all one episode per week like on a Monday or a Wednesday or is it better to separate them like this I'm curious what people think because Jason said he learned he used to do two episodes a week that he learned from his listeners because he has great listeners that hey it's kind of overwhelming I love your podcast but it's a lot to consume and I was like that makes sense so I don't know if that's something I'd love to get feedback I want feedback in general you can email me at like I said nobettertime.podcast at gmail.com you can please rate and review me on Apple Podcasts please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and uh, if you go to anchor.fm slash nobettertime you can leave me a voice memo that I can listen to if you don't like messaging and and this and that or I mean as far as emails um, and I will play that message on the podcast and I will respond to you for sure and um, I have received I have had some um, reviews of my podcast and I did receive an email but I need to it's funny I need to come up with a system my mom emailed me right so <laughs> but it was really nice and I could I will read it and I have received a couple uh, podcast reviews on po- on Apple podcast I need to read those as well but now that I'm recording like this I need to do it when I'm not like using my phone like this but anyways I will respond to you um, and also if you go to my website nobettertimepodcast.com you can even like reach out to me there there's ways to contact me there there's a link to how you can support the podcast if you feel like you know helping financially would help as well no obligation obviously but I just love doing this and I w- want to interact with you I want to hear from you and I want to know what things you want to talk about and what you want to hear about and if you want to be a guest I will put you on my podcast I want to talk to anybody I want to hear your story but just have a great day open yourself up to the concept of abundance around you if you find yourself contracting in fear on this idea of like there's not enough scarcity in any way um there's abundance all around us all right have a great day